I believe that the Bible is believable and a belief in the Bible is compatible with a belief in science. The Bible isn't a scientific textbook. Science tries to explain how things happen using naturalistic phenomena, but the Bible explains why things happen, that God has a plan and a purpose with the world. Now, there are wonderful things which are uh, seen in nature which speak about um, the divine handiwork of God. Now, as a trained scientist, um, I'm a molecular biologist and I deal with genes and proteins, the things which are the very small structures inside cells. And one such protein is, is for example, ATP synthase. And it's a wonderfully but incredibly complicated protein. It's, it has a wonderful design which is just like an electric motor. It has a rotor, it has things like brushes which make it ro rotate round, and it has, if you like, a power source that causes it to rotate round. Now this is a very important enzyme for our bodies because ATP is the currency of, if you like, energy. What that means is, is how we spend money um, as a, you know, in terms of our currency with pound coins and, and banknotes. Well, the, the cells use energy currency called ATP. And it's so important that we, we make our own body's weight in ATP every day. Now for them to actually work, they, um, they work by sitting inside this membranous bag, which has to be completely intact. A membrane is made out of lipid and proteins. And so it works because there is an electrical gradient between the inside and the outside. And that electrical gradient powers the rotation of the ATP. Now for that, um, electrical gradient to be present, obviously the, the bag has to be intact, but there also has to be another set of enzymes and proteins all working perfectly together to make that electrical gradient. So it seems very difficult, you've got these four things that are absolutely required, how they were all evolved by step-by-step -step changes. It looks like and it certainly works as if it was being completely designed. And to me, it speaks of a wonderful, intelligent design of, well, by God, the divine creator. Now, the second um, example of wonderful design that I've, that I've come across is this example of the bones that go into the woodpecker's beak. Now, woodpeckers, as we know, are wonderful creatures are able to make holes with their beak and actually find grubs inside trees. But the woodpeckers have these wonderful bones called the hyoid bones which actually gets which are attached here at uh, the beak extend all the way around the back of the head with some unique and exquisite joints at the back which allow the bones then to bend and to come underneath the jaw and into the tongue of the woodpecker and so when the bones and the muscles um, contract the bones are forced because of these wonderful hinges at the back into the tongue and the tongue extends and so it can reach out and stiffen the tongue and grab that elusive grub. Um, but the fact is that the woodpecker has also got these wonderful barbs on the end of the tongue so that once it actually reaches the, the grub it can grip it and pull it back into, it, into the mouth. Now these uh, wonderful bones just to me speak of a wonderful design that uh, a, di a divine designer has been at work to create those wonderful structures to allow that woodpecker to do what it does and that's get grubs and, and live off them. The Apostle Paul spoke about the things of God, his eternal power, his um, divine Godhead being clearly seen and understood by the things which, which are revealed to us in the natural creation. And so that we have no excuse, we can see that God is at work and he's properly at work because of creation and the fact that he has a divine plan and purpose which is centered on that creation.